In this presentation, we will discuss one question on recursion. So let's get started. Consider the following recursive C function. Here is the function and inside this function, you are calling this function again. That is why it is a recursive procedure, right? And as you can see inside this function, we have an if construct which says if n is less than 1, then you should simply return. Otherwise, you simply call get n minus 1 and then after that you call get n minus 3 and then after that you call printf function which helps us in printing the value of n. Okay. Now the question says if get6 function is being called in main, then how many times will the get function be invoked before returning to the main? As you can see, there is no main function mentioned over here. Therefore, we have to assume that there is one main function and inside that main function, we are calling get6. That means we are calling get function and we are passing an argument 6 to this variable n, right? And we need to answer that how many times will the get function be invoked? We are concerned about how many times the get function is being called before returning back to the main. So what is going to be the answer? Is it A? 50? Is it B? 25? Is it C? 35? Or is it D? 45? This question has been asked in gate 2015 for two marks. I would encourage you to please pause the video for a while and try to answer this question on your own. I hope you're done. Okay. Let's dive into the solution now. As we have to assume that there is one main function and inside that main function we are calling get function and uh, we are passing an argument 6 to this variable n. Therefore, initially the value of n will be 6 and hence the execution starts from get 6. Okay. Now as n is equals to 6 and 6 is not less than 1, therefore this condition is not satisfied. Therefore, we will simply call get 5 because 6 minus 1 is 5 and hence the control will transfer from get 6 to get 5. As n is equals to 5, again this condition is not satisfied, we will call get 4 because 5 minus 1 is 4 and hence the control will transfer from get 5 to get 4. Again, n is equals to 4, right? And 4 is not less than 1. Therefore, we have to call get 3. This means control will transfer from get 4 to get 3. Now it is simple to follow this path. After get 3, get 2 will be called, then get 1. And finally get 0 because n is equals to 0 at this point and 0 is less than 1 and condition is also satisfied. Therefore, we will start returning back to the point where we left off. This means we will return back to the get1 function. And it means the point where we left off and this is the point where we left off, right? After this, you again have to call the get function. But this time you have to subtract 3 instead of subtracting 1. As n is equals to 1 at this point, Therefore, 1 minus 3 is equals to minus 2 and hence we will call get of minus 2. That means this time the n value is minus 2 and minus 2 is less than 1. Therefore, again we return back to the get 1 at this point. After that, we just have to print the value of n. But let me tell you, my dear friends, you don't have to bother about it. Because in the question, it is clearly said that you just have to know how many times the get function is called. You don't have to bother about that what is going to get printed on the screen. Okay, therefore there is no need to bother about the statement. Okay, as we return back to the get1 function, after this there is no statement written, that's why we have to return back to the get2. This means at this particular point, and after that we again find a get function, and this time n is equals to 2, and 2 minus 3 is minus 1. Therefore, now the control will transfer from get2 to get minus 1. As minus 1 is less than 1, condition is satisfied, we simply return back to get2, right? Again, we encounter this printf function, which we don't have to bother about. Now we return back to get3. As after this printf function, there is nothing written. Therefore, we should return back to get3 at this point. Again, we have to call get function with argument n minus 3. As n is equals to 3 and 3 minus 3 is 0, therefore the control will transfer from get3 to get0. Again, the condition is satisfied and we will simply return back to get3. And then after that, we simply return back to get4 at this point. Then we again have to call get function with n equals to 4. Now 4 minus 3 is equals to 1, right? Therefore, the control will transfer from get 4 to get 1. This time n is equals to 1, right? And 1 less than 1 is not satisfied. This means we have to call the get function. But let me tell you, my dear friends, you don't have to call this get function again because you already know what get 1 is going to call. As you can see over here, 
get1 is calling get0 as well as get-2, right? As our purpose is to know how many calls are made to the get function, therefore we just have to bother about how many calls are made, right? We know get1 function will make two calls, therefore we'll just mention here plus two calls. That's it. Apart from this get1, two more calls have to be made. After that we return back here and then return back here. From get5, we will call get2 because 5 minus 3 is 2. And we already know what get2 is going to do. Get2 will call get1, get0, get minus 2, get minus 1. There are total 4 calls made by get2. Therefore, we can simply mention plus 4 calls here. Right? Then we return back to get5 and then get6. From get6, we will call get3 because 6 minus 3 is 3. And again, we know what get3 will call. Right? Get3 is calling total 6 functions. Get2, Get0, Get1, Get-1, Get0, Get-2. Therefore, I can simply mention plus 6 calls here. And finally, this execution is finished. So, how many calls have been made to get function? As you can see, there are total 7 calls made here. And 6 calls made here. 7 plus 6 is equals to 13. And uh, this is 10 plus 2 which is 12. 12 plus 13 is equals to 25. Therefore, there are total 25 calls made to get function, right? And hence we can say that option B is the correct option.